A question that I keep getting asked is how do I strengthen my brain and I wanted to make this video before 2024 gets over. So here is a comprehensive list of things that you can do to strengthen your brain. I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior, I'm a neurologist and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about neuroscience and everything that helps you live your life better. If you haven't subscribed yet, do so, you'll see a lot more of such videos on your timeline. So there are four main things that your brain does and if you want to make your brain stronger, you have to teach your brain to do all the these four things better. So what are those four things? One is neuroplasticity. This is how your brain learns new information, learns to process new things and solve new complex problems. Second is building cognitive reserve, which basically means when you try to solve a problem and things get hard, you need your brain to be strong enough to run the risk of failure and not crumble or break down every time something goes wrong. Now the third is emotional regulation, because imagine if something does go wrong, you will feel low and sad, you need to learn how to regulate your emotions so that you can bounce back and keep going in your journey. And finally, number four is you need to take care of your brain's physical health. Because remember, at the end of the day, your brain is an organ just like your heart, your liver, your kidney. And if you don't take care of the physical organ that is your brain, all these network connections will not work properly. So now that I've given you an overview, let's dive in into each of these areas to figure out what you you can do to make your brain stronger in each individual space. First, let's talk about neuroplasticity. As the name suggests, your brain is plastic, which means all the connections between the neurons in your brain can unwire and rewire. That is, they can form new connections over time. That is how your brain learns new things. So the more neuroplastic your brain is, the faster you can learn new information and solve problems. But how do you make your brain more neuroplastic? Two things. Number one is brain workouts. Learning a new skill like solving a Rubik's Cube or picking up a musical instrument or solving puzzles. All of these are great techniques of keeping your brain's neuroplasticity sharp. A technique that I'm personally fond of is learning new languages. Now, there are many ways of learning new languages. Recently, I've started using ChatGPT to teach me some stuff. Earlier, I used to use Duolingo, but these are fun, exciting ways of teaching your brain how to learn faster. Another cool way of increasing neuroplasticity is by creativity. Any kind of artistic exercise that you do, whether it is painting or drawing or sketching or learning a new dance form, all of these things keeps your brain active and makes it more neuroplastic. So step number one, neuroplasticity. The more you work on it, the more fun you will have solving problems. Now coming to step number two, which is building your cognitive reserve. Now a key part of reserve is building resilience. What is resilience? Resilience is the ability to do hard things and when things become difficult, sticking to your task and not giving up easily. Now the way to build resilience is actually counterintuitive. It is by doing hard things. Now ask yourself this question, what is difficult for you? It could be a physical thing like holding a plank for more than a minute or climbing up three flights of stairs. Or it could be a mental thing like paying attention to a book for more than 15 minutes. Whatever it is, identify that difficult task and then go do that task just to build your resilience. What this does is it activates a part of your brain called as the cingulate cortex, which is responsible for conflict resolution. That means whenever you're in conflict key to do or not to do, the anterior cingulate cortex kicks in. When, when you do difficult things, your cingulate cortex becomes stronger and that builds your resilience over time. Step number three in strengthening your brain is emotional regulation. Now emotions are inevitable. They are biological reactions. They come from your limbic system, which is the primitive part of the brain and whenever something goes wrong you will feel negative you'll feel low you'll feel sad or angry or afraid and when things go good you will feel happy and excited and you'll feel pleasure these emotions are going to happen no matter what but it is up to you or rather it is up to your prefrontal cortex to regulate those emotions and decide how much are these emotions going to affect my action so the key step in emotional regulation is awareness, which you can build by journaling. I've made an entire video on how to journal. You can check it out below, but that is step one. And step two is grounding exercises. The main grounding exercise that you need to learn as part of your emotional regulation is breath work. 
The purpose of breath work is simple. How to switch your autonomic nervous system from sympathetic to parasympathetic. Now, if you've been watching my videos before, you already know all about this. But if you haven't, here's a video that you can follow to learn all about what exercises should you be doing? How should you be doing them? And I hope that it helps you. Now, finally, coming to point number four, which is taking care of your brain as a physical organ. The two main aspects of this is movement and nutrition. Now the most important movement that you can do for your brain is aerobic exercises like walking and cycling. This improves a protein called BDNF or brain derived neurotropic factor. This directly affects the memory receptors in your brain, improves your brain's cognition and thinking capacity. Coordination exercises are extremely useful. So any kind of balancing exercises or learning to juggle a football are great. I have personally started doing this after doing the research. And personally, I found yoga to be incredibly useful because it combines mindfulness, breath work and movement. So in a way you are achieving multiple targets with a single action. And finally about nutrition, the main things to focus on when it comes to nutrition is to make sure that your diet contains enough omega-3 fatty acids, enough antioxidants, enough flavanols, and you're avoiding transaturated fatty acids because that is what harms your brain in the long run. I have made detailed videos on each of these topics separately and I'll list them all out in the description below. I hope this video helps you and I hope you use this in the year 2025 to make 2025 your best year yet. Bye everyone. All the best. See you in the next one. Bye.